It's a great pleasure to welcome you all here this evening. Uh, this is a very special kind of an exhibition and it's wonderful to see so many old friends and may I say so many legends that have made the game what it is and what it means to us who are the mere supporters, the Ripioni. <coughs> It's, a, it's an exhibition that started some years ago when we had a, an image of Sean Duggan here made by uh, John Ian. And this man walked in one day and he walked around it a few times and he said, is that done? And I said, yeah. He did a ballad and do that, who was to go? He did, he did, he caught the ball. Well, there was a goal. Yeah, I know, there were three cork for him and stuck him in the net. It wasn't his fault. It's all in his fault. Come on, show the most thing you can find. It's Bristol Brown and one of nature's gentlemen. And all you can remember is one so cost day. For an ignorant, I can't remember that. <laughs> so he said, there's no need to insult me. I came in here to look at the paintings, and so he did. And then... God appeared in the shape of Jimmy Hagerty, who came down the steps and looked at this piece here, and he walked around it a few times, and he said, Is that Shawnee? It is, yeah. And he said this, you can't all see this, but you'll understand. It couldn't be me anyway, he says, I'll see his ass as I do. <laughs> So my poor man was passing, and this exhibition was born, because <clears throat> so many emotions came out of that one piece of bronze by John Behan of Sean Duggan that we, we came to put this exhibition together, and so it's wonderful to have it. And may I say, you know we always here look for a poet to open an exhibition. <clears throat> well, there was only one poet that we could really come to think of in terms of opening this exhibition. The voice of the game, the voice of hurling. I'm one of those generations that grew up listening to me all over here, and then I ran around the backyard and playing a one-man hurling match, and I was Christy Ring and Joe Salmon and Billy Record all at the same time. I saved and I scored and I played. The voice of the game for so long now has been Michal Omarahartik, and it's just a wonderful pleasure to have him here. Everybody has different stories about him, uh, which is the sign he's an icon in the game himself. <clears throat> now. I know you're people of taste, culture, and discrimination. You're the kind of people who turn down the volume on the television and turn up the radio. <laughs> and so you're saying to yourself, I wish to Jesus that picker is shut up and passed away. <laughs> and so I feel a bit like John the Baptist, because it isn't me you came to hear, it's me, huh? So to open the show, me, huh? He didn't have any that type of language over the past two hours while we were viewing the exhibition. Perad, Tommy didn't show the goons and the Gallagher. Tommy didn't show the Shuffleauer, Kenny. As they for all the nine hours down, as they all look for bookshops in Europe. Because I can develop the inner kind, Kenny's bookshop and gallery in St. Gallagher. Ta kalun te kan nacha as nikom che eno naromse will show kthula sha na kthaha also na hair na mani of ah hiola and so tano ko garde kus le winter keni as often smin. It's said that the inspiration came from man that staring me in the face now, and if he stared at the cockmen like that, they wouldn't run. Shawnee dog. Now, the yen to Maos Tadeh to Michal O'Hare, who broadcast games long before me, and while I was doing it, he was doing it as well. And if I had to say it once, I had to say it a hundred times, the greatest goalie he ever saw was Shawnee Duggan from Galway. Yeah. <laughs> the number one is really number one. <coughs> number one of all the eight of its hair. And it's not an accident, could be Shawnee Dog and Ibra here. Now, strangely, the Manderton goal in the team of the millennium, Tony Redden, yeah. told me one time he left Galway because there wasn't a hope of nothing getting into the Galway goal while that fellow was there. 
You went on, and that accounts people think it's strange that Tony Redden was 30 years of age when he got on the Tipperary team. He spent his 20s hoping to get on the Galway team in the Aperture. <laughs> now, Peirat, Ta Omoind, in St. Gaelic, listen to Kayata, I was in the meal to play. But Ta Laurun took it, and I look at it from time to time, especially before hurling games, Munster finals, Leinster finals, All Ireland finals. I'm talking about Ishkeel and Hamon, as Brother O'Kanea. But I got all the sick lady, Joe McDonough, Ear Amani, the guy look at Ear Amani, Ear Oakdrong, come and look at Askeel, and a lot of the other hurdlers here, they'd be very familiar with that book. It traces the history of hurdling up until the foundation of the GAA. He doesn't bother with what he calls the modern history, everybody knows that, it's well chronicled. But he traced the history of hurdling going back before Christian times and right up through the ages. As Tashe on Simuil, the two counties that figure most prominently in the history of hurling before the foundation of the GA are Cork and Gold. The the amount Igoni and Shosagaga. And it's no uh, accident that this exhibition, this wonderful exhibition, a very, very diverse exhibition that is here in Galway staff. Alas Lauren Dina in St. Laurshin, the great games, it was our piece of Yogan Shogun Mahogne Makas, some game that was played, I think, in October 1759, Mars Vader Lumedawan. Oh, Derek Shay The date is the 27th of August 1759. Now that's a fair while ago, 150 years before the GA was founded. Last week there was a great hurling match at Shrewl between the counties of Galway and Mayo for 50 guineas. <laughs> now, they're talking nowadays about professionalism. <laughs> Galway and Mayo hurling for 50 guineas. I'll show you again, same month, the same year, 1759. There was a grand hurling match in the neighborhood of Goth for a considerable sum of money between the counties of Clare and Galway. There's a man here who played for both, the Connick Mayor, Niall McInerney. I only saw his back, but I recognized him. <laughs> <laughs> Niall and Now, this match in 1759 was between Clare and Galway. Alatasha <laughs> Shostimui, the horrors of the latter, now it's Clare and Galway, Galway of the latter. The hurlers of Galway made a very handsome appearance. They looked well, that's like Shawnee Dublin, you look well in the gold. They marched from Gott to the Thorlock. Now, I don't know what the Thorlock means. I take it the field they were playing. They marched from Gott to the Thorlock, two miles distant, preceded by a band of music, a French horn, a running footman, and a fellow in a Nantic or Harlequin dress. <laughs> and that was the Galway Hornless taking the in 1759. It's very interesting that the band was there. And the band and the parade. And I got the impression walking around looking at the exhibition earlier this evening that was always looked upon as a game for warriors. And warriors were always led into the arena with a fanfare and with bands and so on. And that is why that old custom of the warriors would be walked the two miles, the footman, and then the person dressed up in this strange clothes, just to create the excitement that we always feel before a hurling match, to be sure now, when Galway and Clare were going on. And that's why it's important on our Ireland final day when the Artane boys band, they strike up, or if it's a match someplace else, some other band, and that the two teams march behind. As the Connick men rode on to Shin and Laur, as Tardine and Shogun Makisli, Ahina Corandina Gulmer, Compagati Enodia, Donald Macaulay. Now, Donald Macaulay was a Kilkenny man who loved hurling, who came and joined the Irish army during the war, and he was stationed in the Cape Cotton Galway. And he got terribly fond of Irish. 
He got to know the Galway people, and most of all, his pride was that he knew Galway foreigners. I was known to be a cock of heart, die of the chaos in Arum, I was the Kusha that he sassed or as he said himself, the Kuj me Aaron Maud Bowen, the white boat, I suppose, so there across the holiday. And he worked for the rest of his life. He left in 1949, and he worked as a navvy for the rest of his life. But he wrote a diary, and he kept a diary every single day, from 49 to 86. O Trisha Glair Shkrifa in Ngailja, na rodi a yenche, na rodi a hukse fuinara, it's a social history of the Irish in England over a long period. But he's a one lovely chapter. The Hulish and Ortegan that the horrors of Galway were coming to horror in New Eltham against Kilkenny. Or though she had the humor the layer that he knew. Or the beamer and and again to go back to 1715, 1759, the band struck up and the horrors of Galway and Kilkenny then marched by. As Dulton and Macaulay, not to have the hunt of Fert and Tishtak, and he was able to say to himself, he was in the cared cow with me. And he said, and known to anyone, I gave a little shout at, I forget who the hurdler was, I know him. Tom Rothke in the field, those of us that did not hurdle in all Ireland finals or football finals, it was Tom Laundin and Shaw, Tom Jimmy Duggan and Shaw, Tom Joe Young and Shaw, Tom Rory Ella. The next best thing is to be associated and to say, we know these people, and we appreciate what they're trying to do. Now, on Cleha Omoint, the Kunnebeck piece of Yaukus and Styrachin, and it's called Suil Ella, isn't that right? Of Ta Suilan, of Ta Dinit Brehat and Schlitter, but the interesting thing, the artist is a soccer player. <laughs> and I said to Tom, did he mean when he saw hurling, he saw another sort of a game? Now you can never say for definite what any artist means when they do some work about Nilicity. Now maybe he was. He would know the game of soccer, others would know other games. I've got rather time shall win and shall less in the mind. I was a story of Sanak will Clehe El down. And again, Tom pointed out something that's in the lovely brochure, a quotation from something Joe Salmon said about hurling being different. You're holding a weapon that could do terrible damage, but still you don't because it's a weapon of skill, and they use it for skill and they set out. I was in Willis Edition, cave skill at times and clever amount, and looking around in the different poses, now, Ferker Shin, Shin James e. O'Connor, but it could be anyone. It's not just James, if they can steal a town, the balance that's there, the athleticism, Gokrod Ull took a town ship. Tan Kerman, Tan the Lava, Tan the Suila, Tan the Cusser, and they're all in perfect harmony. As Tan the Ruddy, the Shin Galera, it's in the mind. As the Kulmer Dinner, Uruwine, a group of hurdlers discussing hurdling. And this goes back a long time ago. And one of them was Ned Power of Waterford, who played in goal for Waterford when they won the All Ireland in 1959. And Ned was a coach, taught a lot of young people how to play the game. And he started off writing down at the beginning, I'll teach them <coughs> maybe three different skills. <coughs> And when they had mastered those, another few. And then the idea struck him, how many skills in the game of hurling? And he started to list them. And he finished up with 130 different skills in the game of hurling. Now one of them might be when you rushed in the goal, Shawnee, to hold your ground and not to go back. How <laughs> <laughs> large skill in it, 130. And I got footballers at different times, and soccer players, and rugby players, to list the skills of the other games. They'd start off with great enthusiasm, but by the time they reach 20, they're spun out. <laughs> and the hurling is only warming up. <laughs> so it's Kweha Erlehe. Or Tasha Gohun took Fech and Ternarodi, 
Tarod ila lero and shaharish, on law, on command, on tool, as a rishi and a hassab and shin at the fake and death, aware of the fact that everybody in the field is watching him at the same time. Tar town room to tell them son, or there's no day for them, is the dark one behind. I don't know who it's meant to be. The moment I looked at the one pair I thought of was George O'Connor of West. Now I haven't a clue from Adam is it meant to be George or not. Because I knew George O'Connor for years and years, never won anything. Not even a length of medal. And suddenly, at an advanced age, due to injury of another player, he was called in to play at midfield for Wexford in 1996 when they won the all out. But over the years, he was striving to win, doing everything he could, <coughs> and the great strength the man had. And when you see the hand in that work of art over there, I think of the hand of George O'Connor. And the way he's trying to get that ball, the way he was trying to get the all Ireland that came in 1996, Tosh and Shin. There's a man ahead of him to the ball, equally determined to go and get it. This great contest which hurling is, Tosh and Belair and St. Pictou Shin, our since the key never town come on. I see he has put up the highest of all. The highest of all over there is DJ Carey. I made out earlier this evening that he is one millimeter higher than Joe Connolly on the <laughs> But maybe the street is sloping a bit. <laughs> now, Farrella, if there's any man in the present day hurling that has the 130 skills, Shin A. Now, tell Joe Connolly he's in Shin. And again, it's not just 70 minutes of hurling when we watch again. Tasha Vardy small Nashi, waiting for the game, looking forward to it, trying to anticipate what will happen, <coughs> and when it's over, it's material for talk forever, and also material, as we can see from this exhibition, for artists to go about. Tasha Gale around. But Tak Kyon Un Tukela, the Joe Connolly's speech. I couldn't interpret it at the beginning. I pictured the Joe a kind, and behind him is a bigger picture of Joe, and behind that again, Joe the size of a giant. And the explanation was, as the years go by, the speech gets better. And better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. Now, it is the window. God, count the as far as the Maria. Straight down from me, I see the great Christy Ray. Another man I'm sure that had the 130 skills. And then Shin, his passion for hurling was so great that he pulled on a Cork Senior jersey for the first time in 1939. And he was still wearing a Cork jersey and a Monster jersey in 1963 when he was winning his 18th Railway Cup match. To be chef false, he was that mad about the game of hockey. And even two years later, he was selected in the Cork team <coughs> at the age of 45. But once he heard that he was selected on a majority vote rather than a unanimous one, he retired. <laughs> I think this exhibition should have a permanent home somewhere. And somebody did mention it as I was walking around. There should be a room in Croke Park for the like of that. But if I shoot three, then you could stop at any one of them. You'd get great images. You'd get great thoughts. You'd get great excitement and pleasure from watching it and wondering what it is. Now, Stolen will go in Rotterdam. Dylan Kogod is all free, Lem Winter Sunny, Good Hardy and Serena Cooper, three and Varsha Sean Dunn. It was his idea, not his idea, but it was based on somebody that looked at that and said, Is he Sean Dunn? The whole idea of a hardly exhibition. Tom Kreta Aoun, Lishin, the Meat to Blame, it will last forever. It's getting better and better 
greater interest than ever, maybe that Galway will win the All Ireland this year, <laughs> and that there'll be another captain giving a speech that will get better and better. And they go look with a hill and a rock, to all the sort of the mass meet in the Galway, as Dino Kunde the Hornig, as in a mask layer. Top picture them with fame. And the man that did August, yeah, come on. Uh, August and Farry and then Tusselo Fellow from Waterford. <coughs> He's come all the way down from Dublin here tonight. Now it travelled well. <laughs> <laughs> so Shina will accord for Bremenish willing to spawn to a man out of shot. Shows the political will. Go to meet him on this day. Filiath, August, uh, Crack, August, Kind, August, Star. Uh, just two or three points I'd like to, if I may briefly, uh, hold you please. The first one is, if you will pardon the pun, this exhibition really was a serious team effort. First of all, all of the artists who responded so wonderfully, well and imaginatively to our request to give us some images of hurling and did it with style. And it's wonderful to see so many of them here this evening who have traveled from all over the country indeed to be here. So I congratulate them and thank them for their skills and their imagination. And I must also thank my own team here, Erika, Mary and Colin, who have really worked extraordinarily hard to put this exhibition together. I think we all feel it's absolutely been worthwhile and long may you enjoy it. Half of it incidentally is on the floor overhead. So, Karamila Mahavi, enjoy the show. Thank you.